What's up guys, welcome back to Among the Fence. The week that you guys are watching this, I am currently on vacation, so this may be the only video that come out this week. I might be able to do another one, depending on the circumstances of where I'm going with the whole pandemic thing going on. I'm not really sure, but hopefully I'm able to do another video for you. But today, we're going to be talking about the new album, Afterburner, by the band Dance Gavin Dance. Dance Gavin Dance started about 2005. They are from, I believe, Sacramento, California. They have nine studio albums, and they are a post-hardcore math metal rock band. Afterburner was a requested album, and a lot of people wanted to see me do it. I got a lot of people asking me when it was going to come out, which I know that Dance Gavin Dance has a pretty die-hard, intense, dedicated following because you either absolutely hate them or you absolutely dislike them there's not like a whole lot of in between and for the longest time i was part of the group that didn't like them at all their music is very unique they're very talented musicians but they're just so different they almost have like a jazz fusion and they have like kind of latin influences here and there and they're very technical and intense given the name math rock or math metal or whatever but it just I don't know, I couldn't get into them for the longest time. It wasn't until their 2016 release, Mothership, where I wasn't able to fully appreciate what it was that they were doing. And then their 2018 release, Artificial Selection, I enjoyed that album quite a bit too. So I was starting to kind of understand what it was that fans were so diehard about. And what I mean by their own style is basically the only way how I could explain it from a guitar player's perspective is... The guitar parts have a lot of just weedly doos which are very <sighs> higher notes that are played quick and it's very like just really jazzy kind of licks for the guitar parts and then there's another guitar player that plays the heavily distorted music and the vocalist Tillon Pearson I believe uh, Tillon Tillian I'm not really sure how you say his first name like I said I'm horrible with names and I'm sure you guys will correct me in the comments as you always do uh, his clean vocals are freaking high and i mean like 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 they're like like this is as far as you can see but they're like 10 times higher than i mean we're talking like mariah carey freaking high he gets way up there with his vocals and john mess carries the distorted vocals which he is very good and his lyrics are kind of strange and he performs in kind of a poetic-y kind of I don't know how else to explain it. a lot of times when he sings his eyes are closed he's really focused on what he's doing it's kind of poetic at least to me I guess but their genre is very specific to them it seems like because even their guitar player Will Swan who <laughs> I guess he's like the cornerstone of the band they also change musicians and singers and stuff like it's nobody's business they've gone through so many I believe it's only him and maybe the bass player i can't remember who else is the only original member but it's only two people and will swan his musical guitar playing style that i explained like weedily doos <laughs> anybody else who plays that it's considered to be a swan style of playing and they even hold different like tours and festivals called the swan festival i mean like it's a big big arrangement and he is, like I said, the cornerstone. He produces guys and bands that make this style of music as well. And for me, back when they first came out, I was used to distorted vocals and like cleans that were like not really high, but they were just, they fit the music a little bit differently. But since Will Swan plays, like I said, higher pitched uh, notes and licks on his guitar, Tillian's vocals match it perfectly when they go up high and I just wasn't really into that sort of thing But like I said until mothership came out it took me a long time to really appreciate it But when it did I started to see what was so appealing about them I've also had a hard time seeing DGDs which it stands for dance Gavin dance because I'm gonna get really tired of saying that so I'm just gonna Shorten it down to DGD. I'm having a hard time seeing their evolution as they grew. I, like, it all just seemed like a, a level plane. Like, every time I listen to something, it's like, yep, yeah, this is the same as the last one. And they're still doing the same kind of thing, singing about the same stuff. And there is a kind of a lore to their music and their vocals and stuff, which I'm not into. Like, there's a lot of, like, WoW references and maybe RuneScape. I'm not really sure. But there is a lore to it. And... There's a lot of metaphors in their lyrics, which I don't really get. 
So a lot of times it just comes off as weird, I guess. And I was excited to listen to Afterburn because everybody else was talking about it and everybody else was talking about how good it was and blah, 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 blah. But honestly, I was kind of just disappointed. And the album starts out with a song Prisoner, which I actually enjoyed quite a bit. It starts out with this kind of cool spacey intro, but the vocals are kind of compressed and echoey, which is kind of weird at first. But then once the verses and the actual song picks up a little bit, it opens up and the music is really stop and go and the dirty vocals are good and just i mean these are phenomenal musicians they are so freaking good and the song was really good and it's got a funky groove to it and the song does a really good job with imagery and even just the music does a good job at just making you feel the emotion of the song and like taking you to where they want you to take you but unfortunately it just kind of went downhill after that for me, I think. For instance, the song directly after it, Lyrics Lie, it carries the same kind of guitar tone, like in the verses and intro, and it's got like these hip hop kind of lyrics to it, which make it fun. And I understand the fun factor of this. It is a very fun album, but again, it, that only carries it so far without it just kind of falling flat and being boring after a while. And like the pre-chorus in Lyrics Lie is pretty freaking sick and i enjoyed it and the chorus gets in there and there's weedly d's in there too but it's very catchy and like i said fun but it just it didn't it just didn't do anything for me and after the chorus comes around i believe like the third time by then i was kind of annoyed by it i found it like just annoying i, I couldn't get into it and the lyrics in the song are creative i guess i think like the lyrics in the bridge say, remember when you tried to kiss her, but she was gay and liked your sister? And then it's responded by, I don't remember at all. Which I'm sure there's some kind of meaning to it, which I just don't get. Maybe it's a lore thing, maybe something deeper. Maybe it means exactly what it says. I don't know. So it just, I don't, it's just weird. Uh, it, it just comes off like, what the hell did he even just say? And the song directly after it, Caliente Miento Global, I believe that's how it's pronounced, it has this kind of, has a Latin kind of swing to it with Spanish lyrics. And it just, it made me cringe because I, I already don't really enjoy when musicians take a twist on things by putting different, um, languages in their songs like it's different if i'm listening to rammstein which is all in german that's completely different but if i'm listening to something where the main listeners where they're from the people who are going to be listening to it the vocalist main language is english and they do that it just comes off really just justin bieber-ish kind of cringy to me and it goes back and forth between english and spanish which another thing is is it's been done before it, like sublime used to do it all the time and i remember listening to that when i was a kid and i'm like yeah this is cool and then like five years later I was, it was just it was just old and like i said it was just kind of cringy and even some of the lyrical translation is just weird like for instance he says the way you move solves global warming so i i don't know if that's just a translation from <laughs> Spanish to English that makes it weird maybe it actually means something else I believe that global warming is caused by you know the world being too hot so if it solves global warming that means it solved the hot problem so are you saying the way you move isn't hot so it isn't sexy I I don't know otherwise the music in the song is actually probably the best on the whole album it's pretty dang good and I feel like it would be better if this was just an instrumental <laughs> and the song after that one three wishes came off uh, the music was all right it's very bassy which it was nice to hear the bass and this album does have some very prominent bass guitar parts but the lyrics <laughs> i mean the chorus in it is just a bunch of o's i mean it doesn't even make sense like that's the laziest writing i've ever seen like yeah sure it's cool and all but it's just <laughs> 
put in some effort or something. And even the post chorus is weird too. Multiple stab wounds, multiple stab wounds, yeah! And the lyrics in the second verse are even weirder. It says, my mouth is open wider than the time I had sex. I knew you would do this. You're awesome, bitch. And then in the bridge, it says, I make offbeat noises with my little guitar. I mean, the lyrics are just so weird. Listen to this. I find myself just questioning everything he's saying and why is he saying it. But it kind of has, like I said, that fun factor to it. Like, part of me wanted to acknowledge that and enjoy it because it is fun. And the other part of me just wanted to hate it. And the only song I really found myself liking on the album, which was the 10th song, out of 13 it's called night sway and it's just <laughs> it's just a fun song there wasn't like even a whole lot to it i kind of became numb to all like the wheedly d's and all the really cool jazz licks and all this but in night sway i mean the music was so good it was really fast paced the vocals were tremendous it was just a really good song and you can sense a lot of passion in both of the singers voices and the lyrics weren't like too weird for you to actually enjoy them. I also kind of enjoyed One in a Million, but the lyrics are just so freaking cheesy in that song. And it's kind of catchy, like you kind of want to sing along to them, but it's just, it's the same kind of music and vocal switches that we've heard throughout like all of their career. Even the song Strawberry Wake, which started out with same kind of familiar guitar parts that I'm used to, I was actually starting to enjoy it, especially in verse one. The guitar had some really good writing and there was some really good drum passages and the vocals and the lyrics and the mixture was really appealing. But after like the second chorus, it just became bland and it just lost all of its charm. And the song after it, Born to Fail, is probably one of the worst written songs I've heard in a very long time. So their vocalist, Tillian Pearson, like I said, I'm not really sure if that's how you say his first name or not, but he was in a band and he wanted to join another band. And the other band he tried to join, it didn't work out. And the band he was currently in didn't really appreciate that he tried to join another band. And they handled the whole situation, honestly, pretty poorly. They could have handled it a lot better and it just, <sighs> left a lot of bitterness between the two and this is the song about that and the band he was in before that didn't handle it that well they didn't do too good and this is just a song about how you know you guys suck and you guys failed and we're so great and we're so cool and you guys suck and you guys fail and look how successful we are now the song after it parallel started out with a pretty unique riff like finally but then it just kind of sank into this whole thing that sounded like everything else. Like it's weird because for a band that's part of their own genre, kind of, and like they invented their own kind of sound and stuff like that, uh, man, they do a really good job at just sounding like everything else now. <laughs> Even the last song, the closing song on the album, Into the Sunset, they tried to mix it up a little bit and it kind of worked, but then it really didn't because it starts out with this like sound that sounds like a slow dance kind of song in a prom which i was actually enjoying quite a bit but once it gets to the rap section what the hell are you guys doing the chorus is so boring and then once you get to the third verse uh, the lyrics are just painful climb that ladder ass don't matter like what the what the hell is that like well why would you put something and like, is, is, is it a joke? Is this out? Is this song just a joke? I don't, that's what I mean. Like, I feel like there's more to dance, Gavin dance, like their folklore and their understanding of other songs. And I just don't get it. And it just comes off just being weird. And it, it, it's just unenjoyable. <laughs> I could easily go through the other five songs that are left that I haven't talked about yet, but it's just, it's, it's the same thing. It's just Weedly D guitar work over and over again. Uh, same kind of vocal switching off over and over again, nothing really unique. And then it's just <laughs> lyrics that <laughs> are just so off the wall and they're just so out there. So with all that said, I got to give Afterburner by Dance Gavin Dance a 4.2. You guys might be a little confused by my rating because you might have been expected to be a little bit lower considering my review, which is mostly all criticism and judging. 
But even though I didn't get a whole lot of enjoyment out of it, and I found a lot of things wrong with it, which there isn't really anything wrong with music, it just wasn't for me. But I can't deny that these musicians are some of the best out there. Sure, I don't really enjoy the guitar work. I don't really enjoy the high vocals all that much. Like, it does appeal to me here and there, maybe a song or two at a time. But as far as the whole album goes, I just can't handle it. But I, nobody does it better than these guys. They are phenomenal at what they do. And they are the best at it. I mean, the guitar player, Will Swan, he's got so many things named after him. I mean, production companies, uh, festivals, tours, just so many different things. I mean, it's got to mean something. He's really dang good. And he's actually one of my, not really one of my favorite guitar players, but I appreciate him. And I do find, find a lot of inspiration from him. But I want to know what you guys think. I know there's, like I said, a lot of diehard dance, Gavin Dance fans out there. And I'm sure that if you guys watch this, you're probably going to let me know how much you hate me. And that's fine. So go ahead and leave a comment below letting me know what you thought of this album. If you haven't listened to it yet, go ahead and give it a listen and let me know what you would rate it. And if there's anything you guys want me to review, maybe your favorite band came out with a new album or a new single, go ahead and leave a comment below letting me know what it is and I will make it happen for you. And... I hope you guys all have a good rest of your day. Like I said, I might not upload another video this week. I might. It all depends on the situation. We'll see. Hopefully, I'll be able to get something out for you guys. And I hope you guys are staying safe. And I will see you guys next time. I was